Hey folks, Todd Colton with your Aerospace Structure Series. One of the key skills for engineers is being able to take an isometric sketch or drawing of a part and turn it into a three-view drawing, and then to take a three-view drawing and turn it into an isometric. This particular video is going to show an example of taking an isometric and turning it into a three-view. Let's suppose we have this part right here. And if we were to measure that, we can see we've got 11 squares or units. Going back into the page, we've got uh, 4, 5, and 4 across the front. And you can see we've got kind of interesting shape. Our first uh, thing we're going to need to do is lay out our little views. Let's go ahead and do that with a really light color, but something we can see. Something darker. Let's go ahead and we'll do it with a, oh, a darker blue. And we will uh, fill this in. So starting off at uh, somewhere near the lower left, a lot of times I like to space my drawing from the edge with a little bit of space, but I'll just kind of start it over here in this left side here. And across the front, we're going to need, uh, what, 9, 13 spaces across. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. This would be like as if we were measuring it. And then it's actually going 11 back into the page. So that's the frontmost dimension across the face. And then we're going to be putting the height dimension of 9. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Now, if we were doing actual drafting, we would be measuring this and carefully putting our dimensions. But we're just talking about sketching here. And all we're doing here is we're showing, I'm using blue because we're showing kind of the outline of the part, not the particular, the main lines. So that lays out the front face. Looking from this direction at the front face, we're gonna see our overall part is that big. That's not de dealing with the dimensions yet, okay? We're gonna go ahead and space out our views. Let's go ahead and we'll go four over. Uh, and we will start our side view. So from right here, we're going to do that. So we're got the same height and we have now we need the dimension going back into the page, which is 11 units. So it like, so looks like three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Let's count them again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. This is a lot easier on paper, but I'm doing it here to try and make it for this video. Okay, that looks like that dimension. Now we can uh, now lay out the other view, the upper view. We're going to space it the same distance away, four spaces away before our top view. And that thing will have the same length as that view and the same width, which was 11, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Now we can check these dimensions, or we could have laid them out directly using what's called the miter line that I talk about in my other video, which means basically if you come from here, whoops, not like that. If we come from here with a 45 degree angle, all dimensions can translate from the one view onto the other view. Does that look like we succeeded? No. It's right about there. This is... Normally, you'd use a protractor or something to do this properly. That looks like that work. And if you look, we can extend with an extension line off of this edge. You see, when you hit this line here, and then you come down, you find that it actually, you could have, instead of measuring this twice, we could have laid out one view and then brought an extension line up to lay out this one or over to lay out that one. Same thing here. If we have an extension line out to here, and then we find out that that dimension translates straight down. And any other feature can be brought from one view to the other, from the top view to the side view, or from the side view to the top view through that miter line if it's properly drawn at 45 degrees. Okay, now all of these are just layout lines, and this is why normally if you're doing with this with a uh, with drafting paper, you would have a drafting pencil and you'd have a super hard and sharpened lead to lay out these lines, or sometimes you'd even use blue pencil. And then you come in with a, another pencil that has a softer lead 
that you can lay out a nice firmer line so that you can get the uh, actual lines of your part. Now, so we've got these part, these views laid out, and the best way would be if these were kind of centered on your page, especially if you're actually doing a drawing. We're actually talking about sketching, for, so for my students, since uh, I'm using this topic not in a drafting class, but a structures class to make sure they know how to do sketching, uh, just sketching by hand is fine with a, a bit of graph paper that's convenient to use and it's a bit faster. All right, now what we see here, if you look at this part here, our isometric, we see we've got four units in the front face. Let's go ahead and we'll keep using these extension lines. From four, from the, from the one edge, we've got a line coming up. And you'll notice it's inclined and it goes all the way to the top. And then four units from the other side, you've got the same story. And if we look at this part, and I'll line these up a little better, if you look at this part, that is everything you will see. If you look at the front, you're going to see a face on the left that's actually inclined, but from the view, there's no creases in the part. You've got another face, which actually is flat and perpendicular to your view, and another inclined face. And that's what we see here. So we'll go ahead and actually we won't tighten up those lines yet. Now we're going to translate these to the upper view. Let's go ahead and put an extension line going on up. And we can see that's going to come right on up through here until we see that that back edge, it stops three units from the back edge. So three units from the back edge, we're going to stop it. I'm going to go ahead and line it up better. And that's going to go from there over the side of the part. If you look down, you will see that same thing here. We can extend, use an extension line from here coming up three units from the back. Now we could have measured where that's located, that precise corner, or just lay it out from that view. And that makes this view. If we look at the top, we see this face is going to look perpendicular to our view when we look down. These two, we're not going to see any creases on them, but they're inclined. Now we can use another extension line coming from this line to there. And we can then do an ex <coughs> excuse me, an extension line from this line coming down. I already did some lectures this morning, and my voice is gone already. And that tells us where this is going to touch. It's going to touch right here. But you'll notice from this point, if we look from the side, we notice this point here represents this corner right here. And so it's going to come from that corner, and we're going to have a straight line going all the way to the front of the part like this. Just like that. If you look from the side, you will see this little edge, this inclined edge, the bottom and the back. This ledge, this inclined edge, the bottom and the back. You'll also see this face, which is right here. Now, if you look through from this side, you will also see this face, but it creases right behind this line. If this line wasn't here, we would have seen a dashed line here, but because this line is here, it overshadows it. It looks like our views are correct. Let's go ahead and darken them up. We'll turn it into black and we'll make a thicker line. Oops, we didn't want to do that with that line. Uh, let's redo that line. Let's turn it back narrow, thin. It looks like I'm going to have to redraw that line. So we'll go ahead and do it this way from right here. We're going to draw it right to there. And now we're ready for our black lines. So we'll make it black and we'll make it thicker. And we will sketch in our part. Now notice, let's start with our front view. That means this line is going to go down to here. Actually, I could have done with these with boxes, but you're not going to be able to do drafting with boxes unless you're doing it on the computer. That line is visible, so that is a nice, bold line. This line is visible, nice, bold line. This line is visible, nice, bold line. Those corners aren't really great, but we'll just leave them since this is a sketch coming from the top. We've got this line. This whole edge is visible from the top. And this whole edge is visible from the top. 
this whole edge also visible from the top and let's align it better with our thing and this whole edge is visible from the top we can see this crease in the part from the top where that inclined face goes from this flat face down to the bottom of the part we can see this part we can see this line where we have a surface that's on edge right there and we have this line that line, that surface looks correct and complete we did not finish our front view because we can see this inclined uh, face looks like an edge on this view this one looks like an edge in this view this front is coming up the front of that middle section we have the top which is visible first on the flat uh, and then in the middlemost piece so there's a gap there we've got this part this back edge is visible all the way up and this one is visible all the way up and then I will adjust that location slightly and this one is visible I'll try and get a better camera set up so I can do this on paper that will be even more useful then we check our views we have three views a front view a top view and a side view we have shown all lines now if we do a good job of making these extension lines and the miter line all very light like either light blue or light grayish so that they are not confused with the other lines of the drawing then we can leave them and this would be our completed three views looking from the top we see this face we see this inclined face and this inclined face looking from the front we see this inclined face this flat face and this inclined face looking from the side we see this that's perpendicular to our view and then we see this face which there are two one that we can see and one that's directly behind that completes our three views now if i had uh, one exercise that i like to give students and that uh, i got out of earl's book uh, I need to do a book review on this one, but uh, he draws, has a number of views where the views are partially complete. The three views are laid out, but then there are lines missing. Like we could have, uh, maybe this top view is completely shown, but there's no middlemost lines here. And then the student can look and much more quickly just say, oh, we're just missing two lines here. We're missing a line over here. We're missing a hidden line. The student adds whatever lines are missing for those to be correct views and then puts those in. It's just a faster way to assess uh, their knowledge of doing this. So make sure you can do this. Practice as much as you can. There should be more content online. I'll try and develop some more as well. Enjoy.